Well, it's that time of year again where all the hurricane predictions come out. Most of what you're going to hear is how many named storms there will be, the accumulated cyclone energy, etc. But what matters most is where they're going to hit. I'm Jim Williams, HurricaneCity.com. Since 2003, I've been making predictions on where I think tropical systems will make landfall. On my predictions page, as the season progresses, I highlight in yellow the areas that I had in my top 20. Last year was 11 of 20 and two of my top five, with the average miles away from each city averaging about 84 miles from the center of the storm. Three of those years, I was five for five, and five of those years, I was four of five. You will see quite a few people predicting where systems will go with a wide swath or a large circle, but narrowing it down to cities and islands, no one can match my accuracy. Now, there are people out there that will say his predictions are just based simply on return rates, which is not true. In fact, six of my top 20 this year are not even statistically due or overdue for a named storm. Now, before I get to my top 20, I have to explain how I arrive at my top 20. Last year, my only bad call was predicting 28 to 30 named storms, and we ended up with 18 which is probably why the landfall predictions were not better as one of my main criteria is for locations hit during years based on how many storms I think there will be. For example, this year I'm predicting 18 to 20 named storms and each city and island in the Hurricane City database has an average amount of named storms that happen when they're impacted. So this year being 18 to 20, I look for cities that are close to that amount using track data going back to 1950. Now here is the list of criteria that each city or island has to have, at least one or more of these to be included. I started with 139, narrowed it down to 60. At that point, the strongest returns out of that group make the top 20. The top 20 are placed in a chart that I will show you at the end of this video with each criteria listed, and whatever cities and islands match the most criteria are ranked the highest. It is so hard for a city or island to match all of these criteria. In fact, it's practically impossible. Four of the top 20 only match three of these criteria, with the others slightly less, which at that point the tiebreakers are strength of each criteria. My analog years are based on coming out of a mainly neutral year, with models forecasting a mostly neutral season, I used similar ENSO patterns going back to 1950. Trends are based on, for example, a city that was impacted last season by three named storms. How many times were they impacted the following year? Or, for example, a city that has been impacted each year since 2021. How many times have they been impacted four seasons in a row? The rest are pretty much easy to understand. I will show you the graphics at the end of this video. So without further ado, here is my top 20 for the 2025 Atlantic hurricane season.
have to mention, and I say this every year I do these predictions, just because your city or island is not in this top 20 does not mean that you're at lesser risk. It's just a statistical breakdown, and your city or island could be heavily impacted this year. In fact, almost every year that I do these predictions, there's one or more cities that are not in my top 20 or especially my top five that get impacted and get hit hard. So everybody needs to be equally prepared going into the hurricane season. Breaking down the top 20 this year was so difficult, probably the hardest time I've had breaking it down in the 20 plus years I've been doing this. I had it from 60, got it down to 20, but there were several uh, that were right on the bubble. And this is why I'm saying it, there's, this, this year more than any other I've been doing these predictions, I'm more concerned about areas that were on the bubble that didn't really make the cut on the top 20 for statistical impacts for this season coming up. But for example, Acklands Island, Exuma, Bahamas, uh, Fort Walton Beach, Florida, Miami was uh, right on the bubble there, Cozumel, uh, Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, because they get hit so frequently and they're, they're on that every other year schedule right now. So they are also expected to be impacted this year. So like I said, even if you're not in the top 20, be ready. Everybody needs to be ready this hurricane season. All right, here is the map showing uh, the all the top 20 areas that I predicted with the red dots. And of course, my area of most risk is the Western Bahamas tipping towards South Florida. If there were to be another circle, it would be the Mid-Atlantic from the, most of the Eastern North Carolina up to Virginia Beach. And then the third area would be potentially uh, the western panhandle of Florida all the way over to New Orleans. And while I have this map up, I just want to point to the areas that I did not pick. So uh, you, there's a lot of bare spots on this map. You know, for example, you look over towards Texas, right? There's no cities chosen in my top 20, but there were a couple of them in the top 60 before I broke it down to 20. For example, Galveston matched two of my analog years, 2001 to 2017, both uh, times Galveston was impacted by a tropical storm. Seven times they've been impacted after a brush. They were brushed last year, so seven times it's happened in history since 1871. And they tend to get hit when there's an average of 19.78 named storms, which is kind of my line of thinking, 18 to 20. Now take a look, Western Louisiana, for example, there's no red dots there either. Uh, they're statistically due for a named storm, and the analog years of 2011 and 2017 were both impacted by tropical storms. And four times they were hit four years later. So they were hit four years ago, and they've hit, been hit four times four years later. It's a, a good possibility. And they're also hit when there's an average of 19 named storms. Now down there in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, we have Veracruz, Mexico, which was also close to cracking the top 20. It matched four of my analog years, 2011, 12, 13, and 2017, mostly tropical storms, one brush in 2017. And they get hit when there's a little over 18 named storms. They've been hit, hit eight times, impacted eight times when there's been a neutral Enzo situation since uh, 1950. So they're also uh, on the border of what should have been, could have been in the top 20. Uh, Charleston over here, southeastern United States, uh, the entire south carolina coastline but charleston stands out they have three analog matches 1981 2013 2017 all backdoor tropical systems uh they've been acted uh, impacted four times after a double impact year which was what happened last year so that's a possibility they could be impacted again this year and two times they were hit five times in a row five years in a row they've been impacted the last four seasons so it's happened twice where they've been hit five times in a row. So it could happen again this coming season. And to wrap it up, the other bare spot, well, it's not really a bare spot, but I do have Southampton up there as a red circle, but right to the left of that is New York City. And New York City was close to cracking the top 22, mainly because they're one year overdue statistically for a named storm. And that's one of my high criteria is being due or overdue for a named storm, not for hurricane, but for named storms only. It's one of the high criteria. And they've been impacted seven times uh, two years later. So they were impacted two years ago, and, and seven times in history they've been impacted two years later. So that's also a possibility. So I like to make these maps showing potential tracks that could happen during the hurricane season. 
mid-season looking for something coming through the Bahamas, getting there or over South Florida, heading up the eastern seaboard. Late in the season, we could see something in the Western Caribbean coming through Cuba and then the central Bahamas. And then early in the season, meaning July, August-ish, maybe early September, we could see something in the Western Caribbean going up in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and impacting uh, the Alabama, Western Florida panhandle, maybe over towards New Orleans. And here is a chart breaking down the top 20. Notice on the left column, the cities and islands are in alphabetical order. And from there on to the right, it's all a matter of who wins each criteria, which is highlighted in yellow. And then whoever has the most yellow wins, basically, or loses, if, if you will. I mean, you're a loser if you're going to get hit. You're a winner if you don't get hit. But what I mean is ranking the top 20 and who's going to get the most chances for impact or whoever has the most yellow boxes on the chart. And you can uh, This will also be available in the blog that I will list on my predictions page and you can read it in detail as to how I break it down. And of course, the right-hand side is the final rankings in red uh, to signify the top 20. And here's the map again with the highlighted 20 areas that I picked out. I forgot to mention the Leeward and Windward Islands in the Eastern Caribbean. Uh, St. Lucia was also on the bubble down there. They were, uh, they've been impacted three times, three years in a row. Uh, They've also matched one, two, three, four, five, five analog years, 1967, 2001, 2012, 13, and 17, all tropical storms. Also uh, down there in Jamaica, uh, I, don't, I don't want to ignore Jamaica, but they're really Kingston was the only one that was could have cracked the top 20. It was down in my final 60. Uh, they've only had matched one of my analog years and they're only one year overdue for a hurricane. They're not statistically due or anything. So that's why either Kingston or Negril did not make it into my top 20 this year. Okay, this wraps it up for my 2025 hurricane season predictions for landfalls. Again, I wanna emphasize, even if you're not on these maps and you're not discussed much in this video, your city or island can always be hit. And every year it happens, there's a couple of cities or islands that get impacted that I do not predict. So everybody needs to be equally prepared, have a plan, know how you're gonna prepare for a hurricane. And speaking of which, Hurricane City is gonna be new for this year. We have a new version coming out that's gonna be released on June 1st. and there will be uh, video links on there for how to prepare for hurricanes linked directly to the National Hurricane Center. And so check those out. But the, you're going to love the website. It's going to have a lot of GIS maps, big maps with the tracking and the best performing models. And you'll be able to get down to street level, uh, city level to track hurricanes, look at the live webcams, weather observations, etc. So we're really looking forward to that release. And uh, that's about it. Again, I wish everybody the best of luck this hurricane season. We'll see you on June 1st for the hurricane season kickoff show and throughout the hurricane season as hurricanes hit. I'm Jim Williams. Thank you for watching.